uh, all anglophones uh, conference, com again. conference yes. again, meaning that they were not satisfied with what happened in national uh, in the national dialogue. The national dialogue had been a successful one that every anglophone that all the anglophone people were satisfied. I don't think these boys will carry guns. Even your man, Dr. Ningwanyam, from their side was there in that dialogue, <laughs> yeah, participated. Yeah, so, which means that the the no, no, the no, the, no. the, the <laughs> tung, they were highly represented, no, participating, inclusively. You can participate, but coming out will not you will not be satisfied. You know, participating is different from coming out with a satisfactory answer. <laughs> You can equally participate, so, but you will not come out as. Uh, you see, uh, yes. Mr. Mr. Tadavis. Briefly, so that Mr. Tadavis. Uh, the, the issue now. of uh, Cameroon dream has been defeated in this country. People oh, yeah. are so disillusioned, disenchanted, dissatisfied. Eh? Poverty, hunger, disease, fraud, embezzlement, you know, has become the order of the day. So, joblessness, unemployment. I mean, I mean, you see, you see, you see, you see parents are so worried, children are so worried. Please, now like this, I don't think there's somebody who is prepared to die for this country. Nobody is prepared to die for this country any longer because the rate of tribalism and this has this an unprecedented proportion. But the head of state, but again, even, the, even the national dialogue, which, which head of state? But the, the, the president has been talking about national unity, national integration, uh, peaceful coexistence, uh, living together. All that is on paper. If you come to real practicability of the issue, it is not there. But you were agitating when he said that uh, it was not inclusive. You were saying that you were also uh, uh, so affirming with him that it was not inclusive. It was but you were in Yaoundé, Senator Mbela Mokichas. I'm sure he represented the people from the Southwest region. We had uh, uh, we had uh, other government senators. We had other civil society organizations, which we all saw in Yaoundé. What <laughs> inclusive? How was it not inclusive? It was not inclusive. How, because how do you expect it? It was not inclusive because even the governors themselves of the Norway and Southwest sabotaged the effort of the Anglophone. The Northwest chief, the, all the delegates from the Norway and Southwest came on one agenda, federalism. It was completely rejected. Even before the governors of the Norway and Southwest came to the leader, they said that the people of the Southwest supported decentralization, which was not the posture. The Northwest chief and, 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 and delegates and the Norway and Southwest, they said they want federalism. And that was not, a, it was not even mentioned in the agenda of the, of the meeting. That was the decision of the people of the Norway and Southwest. It was not mentioned. When Katina Tuni stood to speak, he was moved. When Fundi started to speak, stood, he stood to, to, to speak, he was moved. So you see that, I mean, the whole thing, this inclusive dialogue you are talking about, we need another dialogue that will be free, that will be transparent, that will be rational, for everybody to present issues and discuss to end all this uh, uh, carnage that is disturbing us in the Northern and Southwest region. The people of India were represented by the Prime Minister, Chief Dr. Joseph Jogutu was there. Was Did you listen to his opening speech? They do listen to what he said. What now you say, you say the, 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 are you, you say the, the governors, uh, the people wanted federalism, federation yes, in different forms, yes, and but the governors of the two regions, the Adolf Lili Africa and Ben Alkala Bilai, said it's decentralized. Yes, the, by this implication, are you by chance saying that the governors lied? Oh, yes, they didn't represent the true picture of the people of the Southwest, they did not. So, your opinion, they lied, yes, they did not. They okay. did not. Yeah. If, 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 if the people, if the boys are still carrying guns today, it is because the Anglophone left the national dialogue, national dialogue not satisfied. Disillusioned. Disillusion. <laughs> because, see, the war in the Northwest can only be won in collaboration with the population. And if the population are not satisfied, the war can never be won. Because the war in the war front is not a war that has a war, that has a, that has a war front. It's a war that soldiers are sent to go and fight people who they don't see. And it is only through the collaboration of the population that they can be able to win the war. So if you now go to a major national dialogue where people come out and they don't even understand what many people don't know they don't understand what they don't even understand what is the what was the major national dialogue all about. They don't even understand what was the special agenda. special even me here I'm confused about the special status. I don't even I cannot even analyze this word. What is the special status? So when all these things are bundled up together, you see that people are still in confusion and that still get the boys from legitimacy to hold guns. Whereas if people have the anglophones have come out from the major that national dialogue satisfied, we will not say okay anybody that's holding gun in the bush is a thief. Let's go against these people now it is still very 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 difficult for people to 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 to, to rally against these boys because they don't see have they don't see have a clear uh, well, view okay. about what happened in the national dialogue okay um senior barrister Ashu. <laughs> these were now what the people are saying in the quarters and um let me come now to these resolutions because i know that is uh, these are international these are international law that affects what we are going through now you articulated that um, the UN resolution 1608 
uh, is firm on the fact that the United Nations did its job. But let me take you back to the charter. Did not do, not, did not, did not, do, do not do its job. Let me take you back to uh, the, the charter, uh, UN Resolution 1608, which um, I'll read um, the, 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 the four, so four A, B, and of course take you down to, to five, because people have the opinion that these people, the UN did their job based on what we said, what we have on the resolution. And people have the opinion that the contact of the United Kingdom officially came to an end, which is enshrined in their UN resolution. And I'll take you through that resolution 16084, I'll take you through again, four. It states that decide that the plebiscite haven't been taken, I want our, um, our technician to put on screen, uh, if our technician can put on screen on the resolution 16, uh, that should be the, the, uh, the, the, the first page, first page resolution 1608, so that the, the common man, yes, that should be the first page 1608. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that, uh, which states, that just hold it on, uh, which states that um, uh, regarding its resolution 1350 of 13 March 1959 concerning the future of the trust territory of the Cameroon under the United Kingdom administration in which the General Assembly recommended recommended inter alia that the administering authorities the administrative authorities take steps in uh, consultation with the United Nations plebiscite with the United Nations plebiscite uh, uh, plebiscite commissioner for the uh, for the Cameroon uh, under the United Kingdom administration to organize under the supervision of the United Nations a separate plebiscite in the northern and southern parts of Cameroon under the United Kingdom administration in order to ascertain the wishes of the inhabitants of the territory and concerning their future and that the plebiscite and that the plebiscite in the northern Cameroon be, be held about the middle of November 1959. Take us to the second page. Now, let's go to the That's second page. Uh, That's not 628. Um, let's go to the second page. Uh, you, you have to, to, align to, to align to that. Um, on this note, it's 1608 on the, on the, from the beginning. Yes, from the beginning. It's 1608 from the beginning. Which states that... Um, Regarding the 1308 October 1959, I'll take us to the next, the next please. The next second, the second page, the second. Yes, thank you. Now that is 1608, the 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 the, the on one, two, three, four. And I'll read four. I'll read four. Four states that decided that the plebiscite having been uh, taken separately with different re result, the trusteeship agreement of 13 December 1946 concerning the Cameroons under the United Kingdom administration shall be terminated, shall, keyword, shall be terminated in accordance with Article 7B, 76B of the Charter of the United Nations yeah. and in agreement with the administering authority in the, the following, following manner. manner. Take us to the following manner. The next page, please. A, with respect to Northern Cameroon in first, on 1st first June 1961, upon its joining the Federation of Nigeria as a separate province of the northern part of the northern region of Nigeria. B, with respect to the, the southern Cameroon on 1st October 1961, upon it joining the Republic of Cameroon, the fight, uh, the feet, take us to the feet, which says that invites the administering authorities, the government of the southern Cameroon and the Republic of Cameroon to initiate urgent discussion with a view of finalizing before 1st October 1961 the agreement by the which the arrangement, the arrangement by which they agreed and this and declare it and declare policies of the parties concerned will be implemented senior barrister Asho, what does this statement all this mean from the legal context well it simply means the un has prescribed a roadmap to be followed by the administering authority so as to conduct uh, to bring an end to its trusteeship mission they say for southern cameroons you have to sit down with both sides and oversee an agreement, an arrangement in which they declared and agreed policies of the parties have to be put down and clearly stated how to be implemented. 
So that is it. That is what many people call a union treaty. That's what many people call a union treaty. But whether it's union treaty or just treaty, it has never been done. There is nothing materializing that arrangement or that agreement. In, the, in place of this one, we still have the Parliament of the Republic of Cameroon coming up with a legislation that was termed Federal Constitution of 1st September 1961. That is what we have. So the question is, does that constitution represent the agreement that the UN is talking of in this 1608 sub 5? Does it? If it doesn't, then clearly the mandate of the British was not properly terminated. No, but, but in the resolution, in, in that Article 5, Article 4 of that is 16, it says that the, the, the contract, the agreement of 13 December 1946 concerning uh, Cameroon under the United Nations, uh, United Kingdom shall be terminated. In the following manner, read to the end, in the following manner, and 5 gives you the manner, which has not been respected. So the manner has not been respected? It has not. If it has, but show us the document. Show us a document respected. that respected huh? this manner. That's the problem. I'm just saying it that in place of this manner that was prescribed, we have Republic of Cameroon coming up with a legislation in which Southern Cameroon never participated. But it's its own parliament. Okay, let's let's go now to that manner. In that manner, in the Cameroon's uh, Gazette, if you look at it, they said the Fumban Conference was organized to follow that manner. It's illegal. And that the, the Tapatai Conference... Sorry, is... Fumban Conference oh. was illegal because it was not supervised by the administrative authority. I, I stand by the by the, the dictates of the UN. Of 1608. Yeah. Five. Yeah. They said it must be supervised by the British. It wasn't supervised. It wasn't. Yes. They were not at Fumban. Yes. But they were in Yaoundé. Yes, I'm coming out to Chapatai. They were in Chapatai. They were in Yaoundé. Which means that they supervised it and respected that manner. Nothing was said in Yaoundé. If you have anything that was said in Yaoundé, bring it. In the Fumban conference, I, I, I you came with his own constitution. There was manipulation. They manipulated the, the Fumban it, conference. It was an illegal it conference. conference. Sir. It did not respect 1608 okay. five. When you say illegal, it how illegal was it when were it we... was when, not... It was not in pursuance of 1605. Okay, okay. Sir, everything was let me, let me come back to you, senior barrister. When you say um, <laughs> it was illegal, because when we come here to five, five says invite the administration authority, mm -hmm. the government of Southern Cameroon and the Republic of Cameroon to initiate. It means that the government of Southern Cameroon and the Republic of Cameroon, who came in the Fumban Conference, now how the illegal. administration authority was not there. Yeah, I mean that's, that's okay. The, that's so, the cause of the matter. Okay, now invite the administrative yes. authority yes. first. Yes, the administrative authority, the government of Southern Cameroon, and the Republic of Cameroon. Three of them. So two out of three could not go work. The administrative authority was not in Fumban. So Fumban, in the eyes of international law, is a nullity. Nothing was signed there. You come now okay. to Yaoundé. Let's come now to the chapter time. <laughs> invite the administrative authority <laughs> in Yaoundé, which means British now. The administrative they authority was in the chapter time. Now. The Southern Cameroon, the, because I'm reading sub five for those who are watching, you should go to UN resolution sub five, uh, 6085. <laughs> now, which means invite the administrative authority, the British were there in they Chapter there. Mm -hmm. The government of Southern Cameroon was, was in Chapter there. led by uh, Foncha and his delegation. And now, and the Republic of Cameroon, led by P President Amadou Aijo, with the view of finalizing before 1st October 1961, agreement by which they agree. So what is that? And declare policies of the parties. So do you by chance saying that after during the chapter tide, no agreement Where was made? Where is the agreement? agreement if now? any was signed, we yes. are just delaying the yes. point for nothing. If there was an agreement, bring it. But we write in history that okay. in the chapter. Please, are if we not, are we not saying the that historians are, are misleading, they have been misleading the from yes. Yes. Bring yes. us the agreement that was signed at the tripartite in Yaoundé. Simple. If there is no agreement, if there were any agreement, why did the Republic of Cameroon have to go and enact changing, modifying their constitution to enact a federal constitution no. in real place of the of the two parties? Why? Senior Barrister, why did our politicians of Southern Cameroon not <sighs> objected the fact that this okay. agreement has not been signed in the chapter okay. and why did Foncha embrace uh, the vice president I will, I will, and continue with the federation despite me. This the the fact that uh, excuse they me. do not respect it. And we have international, we have lawyers. Excuse me, government. excuse me. We have, I have evidence okay. that in 1963, 
Foncha wrote to Ahijo to ask him when they were going to sign a unity team. I have that evidence. Foncha wrote to Ahijo in 1963, asking him when they were going to sign the unity team. That is one part. The other part is that they, the constitution of 1st September 1961 was kept secret. It was not made public. If go now into Google, the copy you get is a is a copy that was uh, certified by a, 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 by a minister of state. That is the only copy you get. In fact, you should be lucky to find it somewhere. They have been teaching that constitution in the, in the in the university, but for people to take their eyes and see it is something rare. It was kept secret, not until after the seventy two that. People started taking cognizance of your CA. So is this what what has been governing us? Uh, so you don't blame them too much because uh, David, let him land. Uh, let me let him land. I will not blame the Funchas too much because they were coming together to meet their brothers, and in their minds they were saying that, well, agreement or no agreement, we want to meet to live with our brothers. It means that they decided to flood the UN. Um, uh, the UN uh, laid down <laughs> resolution. I am telling you that Foncha and his and all the people who were with him decided to live together with or without papers. Okay, so which means that we should not blame this the fact that they did not uh, respect the resolution because if they decided unanimously, it means they said. No. Let us annul this UN resolution. No, no, they, they, they annulled nothing. No. They decided that they were going to live together pending the signing of union treaty. Yeah, that was it just comes to what I was saying that if we have been living together and all was fine, nobody will go back to question the foundation of of of, of, uh, of Cameroon. It is because people people the expectations of people are not been met. And what Senior Barista actually is saying is correct. Because maybe the, the, the leaders of Southern Cameroon assume that since we are a nation, let's live together. But now that the younger generation have come and that the aspiration has not been made. That why we have to, we are now looking back at what did not go well. Whereas if we, everything was well, nobody would not think of going back there. So our prayer is that, uh, and if we, another president that is coming up should be somebody that love this country, should be somebody that is going to give the youth of this country hope. It's going to make the youth of this country to have a Cameroon dream where somebody we will live and achieve your aims. Because if we have to continue in this manner, we will still have to be questioning the foundation of Cameroon anytime and, and anywhere. So but if we have a Cameroon that everybody can live his dreams, I think nobody will question the foundation of Cameroon. You want to what I would say is that, you know, see, we ask a question that why did... Uh, Foncha, our, our, our one, one, was that Southern, Southern Cameroon politicians were disunited. They were not united among themselves. Because now, what, see, what's happening now? Uh, what they were not united? Because one, when Indele was defeated, when Fonta took over from Indele, that's when the enmity started. That was one. Number two, Indele wanted us to join Nigeria. Indele and they wanted to join Nigeria. Fonta wanted us to join French Cameroon. So there is that a, a, a acrimony between first of all, the French Cameroon politician, Raijo. I don't know see Indele, Bile as people that he will listen to. He better listen to Fonja who supported the idea of joining Cameroon. Who won the, who won the mandate of the people. Voila. So what happened was that only that going to Fumban conference, the Anglophone politicians were disunited among themselves. They were united, they were in faction, they were in division. So when they went there, Aijo was even more linked to Foncha than Indele, than Bile, than PM Kale and the rest. So you see, that's what alone gave Aijo the, 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 the he capitalized on that and played his politics. He capitalized on that um, and, 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 and played the game to make sure that uh, uh, he came to Fuma with his own constitution, which was adopted. The one that even Foncha brought was rejected. Okay. Now, uh, you see, your vice, it seems to have disagreement with what Mr. Sule said. Uh, yes. Um, you see, we are talking and children are listening and uh, you see, we have to educate people. Uh, Southern Cameroonians went to Fumban as one man, they were not, they were not disunited. Before going to Fumban, they were at Manfi. Yes, the Manfi yeah, conference. The, the Manfi conference. conference yes. They were also at Bamenda. Yes. Mm -hmm. They were going to Fumban to stand the for confederation. confederation. They were not going uh, in this array. They were going as one block. And that is the reason why nobody detached himself from the group to go sign things. Nobody signed anything. Now, when you say they were disunited, 
Now look at the government, even when even when they, they, they accepted implicitly but necessarily what Ahijo had put in place. Yes. The state of West Cameroon. Yes. The Mbile you are calling, was it not, a, was it not the Secretary of State? It was. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How can you say Mbile? When he was, he was not in, in no, Kosovo with no. Fletcher. No, Mbile was a Secretary of State. But he wasn't, they, wasn't they remained together. They remained together. The problem is that they were naive. Uh -huh. <laughs> they were naive to think that things were going to go their way. They ought to have, like you said, they ought to have insisted yes, on the yes. respect of the UN provisions. And I'm surprised because that team was it had a greater intellectual value than the Francophone, the, the, the Francophone team. How many lawyers were there? There were about five lawyers in the Southern Cameroon team. About five. I'm not contesting that. Uh -huh. There was Fonlon who had a panoply of PhDs. But come to think of it that all those people allow themselves to be dribbled like children. Yeah, that, that oh, was, that's my question ah. because how will <laughs> Professor Bernard Fonlon no. How will Poncha be? Why will Egbert Tabi? How will Endeli? How will Bile? How will PM Kale? How will all these people sit and see that Article 5 of the UN resolution, which is clear on that, invites the administering authority, the government of Southern Cameroon, and the Republic of Cameroon will initiate an urgent discussion in view of finalizing the first of October? Why did they? Which means that we should not just complain. Because they yes. did the face there. Are we is that not that is your correct? We are we uh -huh. are complaining because they were silent, not that they gave any green light. They were silent. In such a forum. No, if they have gone in they, they were, were silent, sir. Okay, what did they have, <laughs> Mr. Suleiman? Let's let's, yes. let's assume that you were in Funchas Place. <laughs> what would you have done in Funchas Place? The Britain that was supposed to defend you. Yes. Instead, held your hand and gave to Aijo. Yes. They brought down the Southern Cameroon flag, mm. uh, the British British flag, and no, and no flag was hoisted in place. Yes. Contrary to what you said, Southern Cameroon was given was granted independence. Southern Cameroon was granted. You are, you are reading 1608. Yes. Read 2B. Southern Cameroon was granted independence. 2B says, um, <laughs> let me go. Uh, take us to page two. Page two of the resolution. Take us to page two. Uh, uh, let's read to B of the UN resolution uh, as far as that is concerned. Uh, on page two, let's go, no, page three, let's go, go to page three. Page uh, three says, uh, um, it says, express what? They express, express the, the wish. The people of Southern Cameroon. Yes. No, express the, the wish. The people of Southern, Southern Cameroon, Cameroon have similarly decided to achieve independence by joining the Independent Republic of Cameroon. Yes. Which means that they had their independence. That's what he said. By joining. Mm -hmm. by Which means that we are not contesting the fact that they, they have, have their independence. independence. By Bernard, Saudi, uh, Bernard, you know, if they are not joining, they are not independent. Bernard, the problem is the nature of joining was supposed to be determined by sub-5. Yes, sub-5. Now, and senior that Barista, has not been done. That's sub-5. How do we explain, I still come back to this, how do we explain the fact that, <laughs> okay, let's say they do not have the time to object. Foncha, 1994, and uh, Dr. Simon Mon Simon Monzo and other Southern Cameroonians from who, from Garafon, who witnessed this, uh, this the, who were the front runner and saw how top five was being violated, went to United Nations and came back with a flag. We were told that the flag was given to them by the UN, and they went to Mongo Bridge and no showed the flag. Yeah, that was a UN flag. The UN is coming to grant us independence. No. Just months ago, Dr. Simon Monzo told us here on my media prime television that that flag was bought from the market from a shop and it was not it given by the shop. UN. So what is the legal implication of this? Uh, yeah, you see, it is uh, a pity that the people who were supposed to be our legal luminaries decide to mislead the ailing politicians. When you talk of Foncha being carried to the UN, how old was Foncha at that time? He was an ailing politician. And the, the Dr. Muzu you are citing, he's a professor at law. I expected that he would have done better than Foncha. carry Foncha on a tourist trip to the UN. I mean, you, you, he, he would have he he introduced okay. some legal instrument ah. That would have helped this old man come out of the quack, quack mayor. He said they made, it, they made their They decided to go there on a tourist, tourist trip and come back to make a mockery of people. And you see, I would not have reacted that way. Were they given the chance to talk to Boncha? 
excuse me, they went together. They went, they went, they yeah, they went, they together. went together. Yes, they went together. and then they had a, a 90 minute I want, chat. I want to remind you that uh, um, Young Ban, who was part of the delegation, uh, Young Bang, was yes. my was my comrade in the SDF, mm -hmm. in the creation of SDF. Yes. Call, you, there was there was a Young Bang, there was Feko, all of them were all there. Mm -hmm. They were my comrades in the creation of SDF. So I, I knew about this thing. When they came back, I, I looked at her and said, Abed, why would you go and put up this type of show? It doesn't help any, any person. If it is the UN coming to restore, the UN will send their delegates. They will, yeah. not, they will not ask Allah. your politician to come Allah. and stand on the bridge. Allah. Anyway, I don't buy that. I put a big question mark on the performance of our legal, legal luminaries. Who, who would have done better? They would have explained to this because... If they went to the UN to say, please, you have unfinished business, somebody would have listened to them. Somebody would have listened to them. But you go there to go greet people and come back. Sorry. <laughs> okay, senior barista. Um, let me let's go. Let me let's go to the United Nations. You said the UN has done nothing. I said nothing concretely, and people said the UN has. But the UN on the third of October two thousand and seventeen issued a statement. And I want us to play that statement. And the eighth statement, which means that they are going back to the UN Charter 1514-6. Means that they are going back to the UN Charter 1514-6. Let's get to that statement and I'll read the 1514 again. Which senior advisor has objected? I will still read it again. You will have seen uh, yesterday we issued a statement on Cameroon in which the Secretary General said he remained deeply concerned about the situation in Cameroon and strongly condemns the acts of violence reported in the southwest and northwest region of the country on October 1st, including reported loss of life. He calls on Cameroonian authorities to investigate these incidents and urges political leaders on both sides to appeal to their followers to refrain from any further acts of violence and to unequivocally condemn all actions that undermine the peace, stability, and unity of the country. The Secretary General takes note of the calls by authorities for dialogue and encourages representatives of the Anglophone community to seize the opportunity in their quest for solutions to the community's grievance within the framework of the Cameroonian Constitution. He reiterates the support for the UN, uh, for the United Nations for such efforts through the UN Regional Office for Central Africa. Now, Senior Barista, key words that I noticed that he the UN has been mentioning the people of Northwest and Southwest region. And communities. No, everybody is a community now. Even without uh, the people, the community of the Linjan community. But we are going to the keywords, the people of Northwest and Southwest region. They have not talked about the people of West Cameroon or the people of Southern Cameroon or former British Cameroon, which means that they acknowledge the fact that it is now Cameroon. And now which, to that effect, a UN scholar said they are looking at the declaration of 1514.6, which states that any attempt aimed at partial or total disruption of the national unity and territorial integrity of a country is incompatible with the purposes and the principles of the Charter of the United Nations Organization. Thank you. You see, I said earlier that instead of going on a tourist trip to the UN, the legal luminaries would have done better to come up with a legal instrument because the UN uh, believes that their job has been done. If you don't come and tell them that, no, this is where the problem is, nobody will listen to you. That thing was, uh, I think that it was issued in 2017. Yes. After that, yes. the Coalition for Dialogue and Negotiation came up with a very powerful document that was handed to them. I'm very sure if you call them today, they won't say the same thing because after that document was prepared, the US, USA came up with a legis legislation on Cameroon. I think you remember it. Mm -hmm. Good. So if the USA could shift lines and call on France to join them to remedy the situation, going back to the root causes, because nobody wanted to clarify the situation around the root causes. The Coalition for Dialogue and Decision did that, and the United Nations, uh, United States, saw that what they were talking about was correct and came up with that resolution that uh, that uh, uh, legislation the, in the, in the UN, U, U, uh, u.s congress which was really groundbreaking because for one country to legislate on another is something we've not seen for a long time in this on this uh, this earth so i am very sure that if you have that those u.n people today they will not say the <coughs> same thing because they know where the problem is 
they know what the problem is. And no, it's normal that the UN will not be want to, to be seen as they want to go disturb regional uh, stability. A country is more living in peace, you want to come out. No, no, they are not the ones. You have to make them move. Don't sit there and think that because you are agitating, they will, they will move. No. Give them the legal instruments, the legal arguments that back up your demand. And then they can listen to you. My question to you all in the studio, uh, happy Sunday to you all in the studio. My question to Senior Barrister Ashu, le uh, legally, which crime is represented by the national... Crime. Which crime is represented by the national dialogue in the sense that during the dialogue people were invited and grouped to make their proposal for adoption for national interest and to take a decision to satisfy and calm down the anger of the masses but on their proposals and recommendations they were considered the, their proposals and recommendations were considered but were given a a surprise solution legally said can we say that the special status which doesn't reflect their proposal a fraud or a scam by using them to participate in a decision that doesn't reflect their aspiration can i answer him oh yes thank you the crime that was committed was that it was a tailored dialogue you call people to come and they, to uh, come and sit down to discuss and you tell that you discuss everything except this you discuss everything except federalism, except secession, except... I, my, I was sent, I was not allowed to enter the hall because the Reform Party sent a seven-page memo to the Prime Minister in which we asked him to put secession on the agenda. Put it on the agenda and tell, tell these people that, look, you cannot be asking for secession because you had, Southern Cameroon had obtained independence by joining the Republic of Cameroon. So you cannot be fighting for, for independence that you already have. We told him so. And he thought that maybe when we come to the hall, it will cause trouble. Which trouble? Is a position where... Okay, that was why you were not allowed to enter the that hall. That is why we were not allowed to, to enter, because the dialogue was tailored. It was tailored by the government to suit their whims and caprices, which is wrong. You don't call people to come and discuss what you want them to discuss. But, but, but they, say, they say the dialogue was not tailored, because they say uh, this, they, were, they divided the people into groups, into committees, and that uh, there was a committee for, for uh, which looked at the form of the state, uh, which they proposed... Did they discuss this, federalism? The, the, the special state. Did they discuss no, federalism? No, no, no. Did they discuss secession? No. And that, they, that, that the people decided, proposed that they should give special status? It was the, fun, the, 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 the Sultan of Fuman who from nowhere came up with special status. It's not the people. I, I was not there, but we followed it. It was brought by the Sultan of Fuman. No, it, I can't from who brought it. Yeah. Sultan of Fuman, sir. It's the Sultan of Fuman who brought that thing. Let me come. The Sultan of Fuman spoke about the terms of the president. That we should not exaggerate the terms of the president. That if it is five years, it is five years. He even shook the members of the CPDM, political bureau members, because when he stood and was talking about we should respect the terms of the president, we should know we should not be changing the constitution uh, uh, carelessly only because we want to. He said we should respect the terms of the president. Akame Fumu, Akafuma minister, suggested that they, and the Northwest and Sahel should be given special status. That Akame Fumu, I can't okay. give it. Yeah. You said you said the dialogue, um, you said the dialogue did not satisfy and the phone community. Yes. But we have seen that after the dialogue, prominent and phone elite have been benefiting from this. Because we have people who are appointed at the reconstruction committee. We have people who are who have been appointed by virtue of the fact that there is now um the Pre the, the, yeah, the special conciliator, but also virtue of the fact that there's a Northwest and the Southwest House of Chiefs. We have people who were voted. You will not refuse that they are not benefiting from it. We have people who were voted within the well, regional well, assembly well, and well, the, well, the, the division well, well, assembly. Well, well, so we have people who <laughs> were elected into the House of Chiefs and the regional assembly, yeah, yeah. and they have vote, they are, they, are, they voted their budget. They are defending their budget. And when you say they did not, it did not satisfy them. This one, uh, what are they people doing? Are they not enjoying ja the food? Jarvis, we are not, we're not talking. We are not talking here about personal benefits. We are talking here about benefit that has to do with the whole of Anglophone community. Okay. If somebody was appointed the head of reconstruction and this, and the family is enjoying, that does not represent the Anglophone's yes. worries. We wanted something, something that is going to benefit the whole of Southern Cameroons. So if you say. Some people have been voted this, uh, uh, this is it. Yeah, I, th I think 
<laughs> if the problem is still going on today, it does, it's a clear proof that people of the southern Cameroons have not benefited from the major national dialogue. We should be very frank in, 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 in saying these things. Because if we, if, 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 if we just uh, lied because we want to, the government to feel happy, we are not doing good to this nation. So the only way, as I have said, that the problem in the Northwest and the Southwest can come to an end is when we will have an inclusive national dialogue where all the stakeholders will sit on the table and come out with a solution that will be agreed by all the, the citizens of Southern Cameroon. Then for that, we will be sure that the problem in Southern Cameroon will end. Senior Barrister Ashu, let's go to the second topic um, because you have, really, you, have had, you have pointed out this resolution 1608. I'm sure the second topic still have something to do basically on this. You are a lawyer who has an understanding of international law. Under what jurisprudence are we looking at this word reunification and unification within the, con the context of his, the sovereign state? Some say what happened on 1st of October 1961 was reunification. Other schools of thought say what happened was unification of two sovereign states. You are a lawyer. What jurisprudence are we looking at it to base whether it's reunification or unification? Uh, let, me try, let me try the German example and see. Germany was one nation until they were defeated during the... Uh, uh -huh, and divided. Then later on now, they decided to bring the two Germanies together. So this was one legal entity, entity that was split up into many halves and later on brought together. So you will rightly talk of reunification because one legal entity was split up and later on those very various parts were brought together to reconstitute what had been before the division. Like what we are seeing to in South Sudan and Sudan, where which are split. If in case they came back in future, is reunification. Thank you. Sudan has been split into the north and the south, uh, South Sudan and then Sudan. Uh, if, if one day they decide to come back, that will be reunification. But in, case of, in the case of Cameroon, we had a German colony. A German colony. That was not a, it was not a state. It was a colony. Not a sovereign state. It was not a state. It was a, a territory dependent on the whims and caprices of the German Republic. Germany was defeated, and that territory, which was not limited to the present-day Cameroon. Gabon was inside. Keyword, it was not limited to the present-day Cameroon. It was not Cameroon. limited to the present-day Cameroon. Gabon was inside Equatorial Guinea and most other small, small territories, part of Congo, Chad. They were all inside. So, after that division, the French decided to take what they call French Cameroons, and which is now Republic of Cameroon. And the British took British Cameroon, which they had to split into two, Northern Cameroon, British Northern Cameroon and British Southern Cameroon. Now, eventually, all these three territories become states. The Northern, uh, the Northern Cameroons decided to become an independent province within Federation of Nigeria. Southern Cameroon decided to obtain independence by joining the Republic of Cameroon, in whatever form they, they want to decide. And the Republic of Cameroon became an independent state. So, these three have been carved out as states for the first time. Yes. Are you going to talk about unification or reunification? Uh, to be at par with the first, with the German example, we can only talk of unification. Okay. You bring together Southern Cameroons and the Republic of Cameroon. They have never been republics before. Bring them together. That is unification. Yes. Northern Cameroon went to Nigeria. You see, so you cannot talk of reunification because the entity that existed before, one, was not a republic. Two, was not limited to those two, those two territories. Yeah. And you cannot, therefore, talk of reunification. Re you talk of unifying those two territories that have decided to live together. This in time, my humble in my humble opinion. So that's the jurisprudence because this time they I are have now, taken the German example, the German yes. example to show you and the Sudan what, example. And the Sudan because to show you what the Sudan can Sudan inside Sudan can say okay we had Ama El Bashi at the time as a president before when we split it. And now we had this currency when we split it. 
Now we are coming together as reunification under the context of a sovereign state That's that right. has diplomatic missions and the rest. But with the case of Cameroon, you say it is not reunification no, because at the, at the time... Of we the division, not, they yes, were not, they they were were not a sovereign republic. state. They so if we are going by reunification, it means that we were supposed to, we were supposed to add Gabon and the rest to yes. have... By under that jurisprudence. Thank you. <laughs> you, 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 you. I didn't buy that one. <laughs> because what I know is that they were really, first October was reunification. It was not unification. But what were they reuniting for? Eh? Because the two people came together and decided eh, and formed a federation where Ahijo is the president and John Gofucha is the vice president and prime minister of West Cameroon. That was reunification. When, when had they been uh, 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 Because uh, people uh, argue so like that was unification. No, like people like, like senior vice president say people argue uh, that uh, people argue that yes. if we say we are going under the context of what happened on first October nineteen sixty one as reunification, it means that we had a flag at the time before the Germans separated us. Yes. Before the, it, was the, 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 it was a country, a sovereign state. It means that people had uh, the the landmass had the power to negotiate their deals with other international countries they had diplomatic mission they had the symbol they have they had the passport then now they split that like west germany and, and east germany and now if we are coming together under that word you are saying it is a re, a re unification. it is unification it is not <laughs> that it can only be reunification under the context unification that people are only, to share their no control. unification of, of, of it, can, it can only come when you have a centralized system of administration a centralized way that was I used under unification. He has a, a centralized system of his own use after after reunification and uh, to gather more powers for himself and then to, 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 to control the government. So he said that was he fell apart with Funcha under under unification after the United after from after the fell apart with Funcha because they could not agree. That was he appointed Muna the Prime Minister. He has a little problem with, with Funcha. He even said, said as I go single Jua. He said Gomja, who was supposed to succeed Foncha, he could not uh, he could not put Augustin Gomja, he put but uh, uh, he placed Bemuna. So uh, Mr. We do respect to Sino by Mr. Ashu. First October nineteen sixty one was reunification and not unification. Let me ask you again this question. Yes. If you say first October nineteen you you react. If you say first October nineteen sixty one was reunification, not unification. Yes. Again, I want to ask you, um, like the case of South Sudan, he cited yeah, South Sudan. South Sudan, uh, which was one. Yes. Under Ama El Bashi. Yes. Now they had one currency. Yes. Everything. They had one anthem. Uh, the front. question now, many, like everything. Yeah, many want to ask is if we are going by the premise that Cameroon as a state is reunited on 1st of October, yes. what was the common flag they used before 1st of October 1961? There was no flag. What was the anthem? <laughs> there was no anthem. Well, who was the president? There was no anthem. Who was the president there was no anthem. Of the, of there was no anthem. Then is that reunification? <laughs> is it? That is unification. <laughs> I stand by it. <laughs> because when you look at what he has analyzed, I think that uh, he's correct. Yes. From that jurisprudence. Yes. Because we didn't have any legal, any legal no entity that brought us together. So. Uh, I think. Uh, so why, it. so why did Foncha accept to be vice president? Are you pre pre president? Which is unification no. means they are sharing. It's, no. Let me tell you, Zan. I think it's unification. <laughs> unification, yes. Vitaly, you, you are saying you are you you are. <laughs> <laughs> land, 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 land. Yes, land, <laughs> land, land. I, I think it's unification because, uh, as senior vice Asha said, there was no clear cuts that this is this country and this is this country. And so it was just one Cameroon. And so if we are coming together, if, 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 if we, are to, we are bonding together, I think it should be relocation. The premise of, of like this is what brought us to 11 February brought us together. Now, is that you, you, you say it's reunification. I'll come to senior Baza. You say reunification. Yes. But before uh, the French, before the partition of Cameroon, yes. British, signed a treaty in victoria yes. with king manga williams which means that yeah, which means that it was the a treaty yeah Dimbia treaty means that they they recognize that british colonized victoria not douala king bear and king aqua signed a treaty now with the germans in douala whereas herwet signed a treaty with the bimbia in the hinterlands of the northwest region we had from galiga mm -hmm. who had their own fair 
That's why there were intertribal wars between this territory and this territory. And at that time, we did not have any legal representative you can sign in with anybody that the German use their powers now to say this is German Cameroon. Now, under this context, do you still stand on the fact that it is? We are not. We are talking about. So, we are talking about sovereignty. Yes. Now. We are about yeah, it's just sovereignty. Nigeria, we 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 we, part, we join Nigeria as a sovereign country. Yes. We're not there yet. Eh? We we yet. join Nigeria as a sovereign country that we are not under NCNC. NC. No, we are not no, there no, yet. Not. To be very to be very frank. Let me come. Let him land. We are talking about sovereignty. We are not talking about those local local citizens that you find. He, had, he, 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 he got no place in this argument here. We are talking about sovereignty of the country. Where, as you, as you said, the flag, the anthem, the 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 the, 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 the government, and what of you. All the, oh, it was all in Southern Cameroon. We had the prime minister, who was Mr. Sancha of West Cameroon. So the two decided to come together. So I, mean, I feel that it's unification and no unification. Unification only can have, that was the system I usually use in after after reunification to control the government. And that was uh, to control the government. That was all. Mr. Suleiman, when it comes to Cameroon history, I'm, I'm virtually very confused. <laughs> because of, uh, of, of recent, of late, I learned that the government from, uh, there was a committee of, of uh, uh, yes. researchers. Historians. Yeah, historians. 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 Yeah, historians. Yeah, history yeah, history of the country. Yes, so historians. I was asking myself, uh -huh. does that mean that the history that the Cameroon history has taught it right to advance? Uh -huh. <laughs> what did I study now? Was it a useless history? If they are not coming up to start to write a different really history right? about, <laughs> That's rewrite it. a different history about Cameroon, <laughs> does that mean that my certificate I had in Cameroon history is invalid? <laughs> so when it comes to Cameroon history, to be very candid, uh, we are very confused. That's in politicized. Yes, we are very confused about ah, as far ah. as far as Cameroon history. Professor Go said it yeah. here yes. that that they 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 they, they, were, they brought him and what have you up to the only one only one session and since then they have not started again yes. because to write the history because uh, they will be because disagreements. <laughs> Barrister. I, want, I always like to look at legal issues here. Mr. <laughs> Suleiman is not convinced. And as well as some viewers, uh, they are not convinced. Honestly, I will go by your path. But I want to get uh, more clarification. Yeah. <laughs> I pointed out to Mr. Suleiman that the one mass you talk about German Cameroon, each chief has an autonomy over his area. Kuvali Kinye has an autonomy over his area. King Manga Williams of Bimbia had an autonomy over his area. From Galiga had an autonomy over his area. Even in Kum, in in in, in so the in so Fund had an autonomy. Bali, Same that's why he had the Bali resistance or the different resistance. Mm -hmm. That was German Cameroon, not the <laughs> sovereign state of Cameroon, right? Very correct, sir. You see, when they talk of German colony, it was in actual fact not really a colony. It was, uh -huh. it was a group of communities that represented <laughs> German interests. Okay. Because apart from um, the coast, the hinterland was represented by a series of kingdoms which were totally independent of one of the other. Now, uh, if you come to, to Manfe, yes, come to Manu Division, yes, the story is different because it's, we, in our own place, the Germans did not defeat us like they defeated other people, we beat them. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's we true. beat them. Yeah, we are Sanaka Sanaka and Sanaka will beat them. Yes. So the relationship between the Manuman and the Germans was quite different. I mean, it was that of partnership. So we were we were really not their colonial subjects. So if you now take that vast territory that had that was under German influence and call it a colony, you will not by any stretch of the imagination give a head of state to that colony to that territory, it, so as to call it a country. It was not a country, it was not a state. It had no government. It had nothing. It was a group of independent that kingdoms. The, the German scientists that were, of this kingdom. Yes, the German had some agreed arrangement with these people to be doing their business. So, I mean, it is wrong to consider that as a country today and say that that country, because it was split, was one. part of it went after uh, uh, 1960, part, big, big chunks of that territory became independent states. Then, some two small parts that were remaining decided to come together after independence. You say they are reunifying. Now, look, it is an abuse of language. <laughs> because this territory had never been a country. Under never. the context now of a country. Let us take, let us take the examples that some francophone, on some of our francophone brothers, misrepresent the Dwala 
the Dwala Treaty. Yes. German the Dwala Treaty. It was signed. Uh, King Bear and King Aqua. You look at you see the Court of Appeal building in Dwala. Mm -hmm. That house just next to it. There's a big house next to it. Mm -hmm. That is where they signed it. It was signed by the chiefs of the Eastern Bank of Devuri. Bonaveri was not part of it. Yes, he correct. That it is down. what that is what people are trying to take today and say it was for the whole Cameroon. It's wrong. That is wrong. It was only for the, the chiefs of that Eastern Bank. That's how Bimbi assigned his own treaty. A few days later, Bimbi assigned their own, and Bonaveri was along with them. Yes, Bimbi assigned his own treaty. You see, so it is wrong. <laughs> but it's a contradiction of history. It is not a contradiction. <laughs> it's a contradiction of history. We are saying, we are saying that that <laughs> what this man says is true. It's a contradiction of history. No, should not make, not, it's, don't make mistakes. These are clear facts. These are clear facts. I don't, I don't, know, I don't mix jumbo those things up. They are clear facts. Under Cameroon, uh, under Germans, Cameroon was not a state. Cameroon was not a country. We had. A series of kingdoms that were independent one of the other and that were doing business with the Germans. We should be that house. I was talking about that house near the Court of Appeal, they yes. call it the Pagod. Mm -hmm. We are told that it was built by the Bakosi chief as dowry for his daughter and uh, for the daughter of the of the Dwala king. Mm -hmm. uh, king Makoge, they say he's the one who built the house as dowry for the Dwala king's uh, daughter's do dowry, uh, 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 da daughter. So you can see, uh, some, I'm not telling you that we had independent kingdoms that were doing business. Well. So how would the Bakosi king come to come and build a house in Dwala because he's married the Dwala king's daughter? <laughs> that's why I tell you to resisted. That's why I tell you to resist the German penetration. That's right. You that's had right. even resistance yeah, across, across to, think, even I, after the German. That's just as I said. As, as, as if somebody like uh, Professor Vitongo can sit here and say that they, you want to rewrite Cameroon history, history, he's putting some of us. Who studied history into doubt? Because first of all, in high school, we read the books of history, Cameroon history books of Professor yes, Vita. You know, Victor Ngo. Mm -hmm. okay. If he now sits and say they want to rewrite history, then what did he write that we write? No, what he's saying is that they want to the government. The government will say the government that created a commission. commission. Yes. It's not him. Because yes, the government created a commission that they should harmonize, they should they should come in harmony because there has been a lot of distorted facts from it has been politicized by different people. Yes. That they should come together and see and so that they can have a roadmap to say, okay, this is what posterity should judge Cameroon for. No, if if if, if you go by that, you will see that there will still be more, there will still be much confusion. Ah. The Anglophones <laughs> will see like what what will so what I don't know. Are, are we said to are we said to are we said to that it is unification and not reunification? Me, I'm, I'm against that. <laughs> I'm not with that. I'm, it is really first October 1961. It's reunification, not unification. Okay, we are here on House of Commons, and I believe that uh, let's assume that is a vote. So three people go for and you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have not voted. We have not voted. No, he is. Okay. Mr. are you for reunification or unification? I'm for unification. I'm for unification. Yes. Mr. Sudamai, are you for reunification? I'm for reunification. Senior vice president. A casting vote. And which means adopted that it is unification by nature. What has been explained? Unification is a system. Is a system government adopted? Are you adopted to 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 control power? I don't. The president of the Republic of Cameroon. Eh? He was the president of the Republic was of Cameroon. He was the federal Republic of Cameroon. No, no he no. was okay, the you, president well, of the, as of the independent. He was the first independent president of the Republic of Cameroon. Oh yes, too. That had the independent of yes, January that's true, that's 1960. True. Yes. Now Foncha was the first elected prime minister of the British Southern Cameroon that had an independent as of 1961 joining the Republic of Cameroon. Yes. Which means that the two nations are coming as unification. Yes, as they're unification. coming together for the first time. Their first time as elected officials as nation. With symbols, no. <laughs> with, with two governments, with parliaments, and the people, the territory, people. and everything. At this time, Correct. we didn't have a parliament and the German Cameroon. So we, when I talk about, I'm talking about the contextual West definition of a state, and we are looking at Cameroon now under this contextual West definition. We cannot quantify it as reunification. Properly stated as unification. the jurisprudence is unification. Tell me about that. What's the way forward on resolution 1608? Well, uh, the, the way forward is that, um, like my brother here, Vitalis rightly put, pointed out, the foundations of the country were built on shifting sand. Uh, when you do something that is not correct, you will be caught up 
with time, and that is what is happening to us. We were asked to sit down and determine the arrangement by which the declared and agreed policies of the parties were going to be implemented. We never did that. We instead, we instead preferred to use tricks. And so we have been caught by it. We don't want any more bloodshed. We think that the way forward will be for the people of Cameroon to sit down and revisit the foundation of the creation of this country so that we agree as to the form of the state, we agree as to the nature of the government, a new constitution, a new electoral code, and all what has to do with the running of a country. But before that, before that, because we cannot do that on a TV platform, before that, we need people who are minded to bring about change. And uh, if you look at the CPDM who have been in government for 40 years, they are not minded to bring about change. So I'm calling on all Cameroonians, please. <laughs> Reform Party wants to bring about change in this country. The Cameroon we dream. want you to live the Cameroon dream. We want to revisit that foundation of this country so that all of you should be full Fulfilled citizens of Cameroon. Nobody should regret being a Cameroonian. Let us be fulfilled citizens. Let our country be the African heaven that the Africans pro proclaim. When they say Cameroon is Africa's breadbasket, they are indirectly indir 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 telling you that you are Africa's okay. heaven. So please, Reform Party is the only party that can bring you there. Those who want to join All their votes, please bring them so that we send our CPD in the next election. Those who want to join to contact you? Of course, they're they're not. Maybe how should they contact you? You secretary it. You well, you have my number. If you don't have it, six nine 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 eight nine two seven nine. Javis, I think uh, first of all, let me first of all thank the mayor of Kambe, Mayor Musanfo. He came out the tent among the cleanest towns in Cameroon. I want to thank him for the wonderful job he's doing in Kambe. So I want to say that uh, Senior Barista Ashu. Our concern here should not be parties, but those who can deliver the goods. The CPM party has failed, but not everybody has failed. If you go to Nkambe, you discover that we are, we are doing wonders in Nkambe. And so we are praying that those should, should manage this country should be people with conscience, people that will look and love the people. Because if we have to depend by, through parties, by parties, this country will never move forward. So we are praying that anybody that is coming up to take over from President Paul Bia should be somebody that should love this country and should work for the Do you of think country? that also we can do that without political parties? We can do it with political parties, but it shouldn't be like it's some, a particular political party is the one that's going to give us hope. We so, should depend so, on people, not political parties. So, look so how can these people now come? Go. These people must come from a political party now. They come from a political party. But that's why he's saying that his party is giving. It, as the same see, mayor is coming see, from a party. When, when, when I talk, of, when I, talk I always refer to my constituents where I come from. If you go to my constituency, you discover that we are doing wonders. Okay. We are of the CPTM. Why is that get the message now clearly? <laughs> Thank well, you for yes, coming. Well, the, the United Nations has made a mistake. <laughs> the United Nations has made a mistake. Our political leaders have made a mistake. All what we need is that we have to come, we have to sit on the drawing boards and look at the problems of this country so that we can move forward. That is the only way out. And uh, all I will tell people is that if you if you want to have people who have this country at heart. If you want to see people who want to see this country, who whose leader has moved like, all the ten region, need your phone, has got all the two ten region. He's a grassroots politician. <laughs> uh, people know him. You see, so power to the people, equal opportunity for all. That is our slogan. So come on, come to the SDM. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, uh, we we of the we the med members of the media of the general the voice of the voiceless. We want to thank you all for watching this program. If you want to be a panelist to this program, uh, you want to partake in the discussion, maybe you want to disagree, maybe we, you want to also organize a topic uh, based on your disagreement in what you are we watching, uh, you can contact me on the numbers on your screen, 676 Four three one three eight four. I'll add you into the WhatsApp group of members of House of Commons where the debate continues. And in case you disagree, some of you have been disagreeing with members of this panel. You have a right to call for a one-on-one -on -one with them, and so that we can have this issue. This is House of Commons where we bring issues that matters to a common man, and we debate it to ensure that we educate, inform, and of course entertain the people out there.
to also be uh, members of the panel, you can contact us on the number of your screen. This program comes up every Sunday at exactly 12 to 1.30. Rebroadcast on Sunday at 10.30, you have a rebroadcast of this same program. You can also have it in our YouTube channel. BT Media Group is our YouTube channel. You go to our YouTube channel, you have this program and all of our programs on My Media Prime. You can follow us on Facebook, BT Media Group on Facebook, or My Media Prime TV on Facebook. Twitter, My Media Prime TV on Twitter. Those are our social media handles. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming. Barist, senior barista, uh, of course, Mr. Sui, and of course, Mr. Vitalis. I leave you with this. No matter the matter, what matters is your matter. And what should matter for you is that you should stay out of trouble. My name is Tamai Javis from Cameroon Economic Capital, Duala Feng, Jong Bange. Bye bye.